You're just gonna chop the edge off. Watch your fingers. <laughs> We traveled back in time to the turn of the 20th century and learned how to carve decoys. There you go. In Tuckerton, hungry locals often hunted waterfowl. Before they boarded their boats, though, some would visit a decoy carver shop, similar to this one at the Tuckerton Seaport and Bayman's Museum. Why were decoys important at Tuckerton? Well, if you wanted to get the birds, and they wanted to get the birds, both to eat and, to, and sometimes sell, and they also took people out hunting, uh, guide, acting as guides. They wanted to get the birds to come to them. The only way they're gonna do that is with the decoy. The charming waterfront buildings here, like the Clam House and Boat Works, are representations of historical places in and around Tuckerton. We wanna give people a kind of a slice of life of what uh, life was like around the Barnegat Bay at the turn of the 20th century. And we want them to carry that information through and think about the differences between then and now. We're inside a replica of Tucker's Island Lighthouse. It now stands at the seaport. It was originally located nearby. It fell in the water in 1927 after a series of storms. There are 42 steps to the top. 42 just happens to be the exact number of steps here at the Seagirt Lighthouse. This is the original land-based building. It dates back to 1896. Unlike some of the other lighthouses at the time, this one had indoor plumbing, three bedrooms, a kitchen, and more, which is why it was considered a bit of a dream job for the keepers. Now visitors are invited to climb this lighthouse and the many others throughout the state. This is basically the midway point between Navasink Twin Lights to the north and then Barnegat to the south. And so what would happen was when mariners were leaving Twin Lights, they could not yet see Barney. So this lighthouse was erected to illuminate that dark space. This is the original ladder the keeper would climb. He'd carry coal with him to fuel the light, and he also had to come up to clean often. If the windows were dirty, the light wouldn't shine bright enough for those on the ocean. Years ago, lighthouse keepers weren't the only New Jerseyans to live where they worked. There are several historic villages in the state, offering people a sense of what it was like to work in New Jersey hundreds of years ago. The historic village at Allaire, located within Allaire State Park, was a prosperous iron producing community in the 1830s. Workers and their families lived here, and many of the original buildings still remain, like the bakery, general store, and blacksmith shop. Let's head inside and see what he's working on. What were they making in here? Well, a lot of tools for the, for the blast furnace, a lot of repair work. We may have to install tires on wagon wheels, a lot of horseshoeing. We made a chain link and a decorative heart. How am I doing? <laughs> I've seen worse. Clearly, blacksmith Kevin Marshall is the expert. He's given presentations to 7,000 school kids this year alone. These sites are open throughout the summer, giving visitors a chance to embrace New Jersey's history.